that's a little bit soft. Ooh. Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to another ice fishing episode out here on this beautiful reservoir. Today, we're targeting massive rainbow trout, big old rainbows, maybe some brown trout. We'll just have to see, but we've got all day to fish. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning right now. There are a couple other tents over there of people fishing, so hopefully they're catching them. But I think I'm gonna start fishing right here in this little cove. A lot of the trout in the winter, they'll just come up in these little coves like this and circle around and look for food. So let's get set up, start fishing. Those blades on that auger are not very sharp. That was quite a workout. Thankfully, the ice is only like six inches thick. Whew. All right, let's see how deep we are. Ideally, I wanna be fishing in like eight, 10 feet of water, which isn't too deep, but this is not a deep lake. All right, so I'm just dropping a jig down to check the depth. This is what you have to do when you don't have a sonar. All right, we're at bottom. Let's see what we're working with. Oh yeah, we're good. We're working with like 10 feet of water, 12 feet. That is perfect. I think we're gonna set the tent up right here. Now, even though it's not too windy right now, I'm still gonna stake this tent down because it's usually always windy here. At about noon, the wind picks up, so we're gonna go ahead and just prepare for that. Once you get it going, you can just twist it right into the ice. <laughs> and it's cracking the ice all around me. I mean, this ice is about six inches thick, so technically, if you really wanted to, you could drive a small car out here, but you won't catch me doing that. And goodbye to the outside world. All right. I'm actually gonna take this coat off because I'm already getting really sweaty. Whew, it's warm actually today. Whew. Dude, forget going to the gym. Just drill a couple ice holes with some dull blades. You'll be looking like Brad Pitt in no time. All right, so this is gonna be my jig and rod, this St. Croix combo which will be linked in the description below. Um, it might be sold out, but if it is, I'll find one that's similar to this if you guys want to check it out. And I've just got this little white spoon on, which will also be in the description. I got some mealworms in here. It's got the little spoon with the mealworm. We'll drop her down. All right, so here's the other rod I'm gonna use. I've got a little power bait tube, one of my favorite jigs for ice fishing and open water fishing. And then I've got here some garlic scented power bait, which I usually try to avoid using power bait, but this lake in particular, the trout are quite fond of power bait. So you can take some of that and basically just cover it around the whole tube. There we go. Now it might fall off right when we drop it down there, but that's a chance I'm willing to take. And I think I'm gonna rest the power bait just a few inches off the bottom. And then I'll kind of focus on the middle of the water column with my jigging rod. All right. Here we go, hopefully nothing pulls it in the hole. All right, now it's just a matter of time. Sometimes most of the fish are gonna be right below the ice. I mean, you spend all the time jigging off the bottom, but then you'll just see a fish swim like a couple inches below your hole. So it's not a bad idea just to fish like a couple feet down, you know? All right, time check, it is 12.22. So I've been fishing for an hour and a half. No bites, but I'm still holding out hope for this spot. In the meantime, I'm getting a little hungry, and since we're clearly not catching anything right now, 
I have just the thing. In one of my last videos, me and Grayson caught some striper, and I've got some of those fillets out here with me, and I figure we might as well just cook them up out here on the ice while we wait for these fish to bite. All right, so we got a striper fillet right here, and in the last video where I cooked these, a lot of you guys were telling me to cut that red bloodline out of the fillet because it makes it taste fishy. To be honest, I didn't really care at all. I mean, it tasted kind of good in my opinion, but just because you guys told me to, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And I'm not going to throw these extra pieces down the hole because I'm pretty sure that's illegal. There we go. Got all the bloodline cut out. Now I'm going to cut it into two chunks. I'm telling you guys, this is one of the best fish I've ever eaten. And to go along with our fish, I've got a potato. I'm going to cut some fries and we're going to cook those up too. I'm going to save half of it just in case we catch a fish later that we want to cook. Hopefully we can have fish for lunch and fish for dinner. <laughs> Guys, my... No! Oh, he was right there, he's right there, he's right there. Oh, oh, oh! Got him! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on, folks! Woo! Good one, too. It's a good one. Right when I started cooking. Whoa! Look at that! Yes! Woo! Yes! Check that out! Right when I started cooking, I was right about to start lighting up the stove and getting some striper on and then my rod with the power bait just starts going down I set the hook missed him but he was right below the hole and he bit the jig with no power bait on it he stripped it clean that's a good fish too that is no small trout dude oh that makes me so happy sometimes it's not about the numbers it's about the quality and that is a quality rainbow trout I'm gonna keep this guy cook him for dinner still gonna cook the striper up here but there we go, we have dinner. Woo! There we go. Put our pan on. And hopefully, we'll get interrupted here by another big fish. All right, I'm gonna put a little oil in the pan. Just a little bit. I'm also gonna put a little butter in there. Get that melting down. All right, and I got some Old Bay here, which is kind of a saltwater striper seasoning, I think. I'll throw a little in there. And we'll take our fish. Lay it in there. And we're also gonna hit him with some Weber Zesty Lemon. And then we'll throw a few of these potatoes just around them. Let those cook up with them. Do fries taste good with Old Bay? We're going to find out. There we go. Got fresh striper. Well, it's not really fresh. It's been in the freezer for like a week. So it's still going to be really good. Not as good as if I just barely caught it. But you got fresh striper cooking. Just caught a big fat rainbow. And I think I did just get another bite a second ago here, so hopefully we get interrupted here by another one. That thicker part of the fillet is still cooking, but this is done. Let's give it a try. Mmm, that is good. It's not as good. I was cooking it fresh. When I cooked the striper right after I caught it, it was amazing. This is still really good, but it's been in the freezer for a week, so just not as fresh. Ooh. And there we go. Fresh fish and chips on the ice. Let's try one of these fries out. Seasoned with Old Bay. To be honest, I can taste more butter flavor than Old Bay, but I'm digging that. Now, if one of these rods would go off, that would make me happy. Fish on, guys. Fish on, fish on. I'm getting bit. I'm getting bit. This is the power bait, so I'm going to let him eat it. Gosh dang it. Shoot. That's the thing with using power bait. It's just kind of clumped up around that hook, and it comes off really easy. If a fish just hits it once or twice, it's probably going to fall off. 
And then once they get it off, they can just eat the power bait. Oh, no, it's still on there. That power bait's still on there. Let's just send it back down there. Come on, come on, fish. Well, we'll wait for him to come back. I am so glad that I brought power bait. It was kind of a last minute decision and I'm glad I did it because so far I haven't I haven't even gotten a bite with the uh, spoon and mealworm which I think it's just a matter of they want power bait. So we're gonna take the old mealworm off and load this baby up with some power bait. And it's probably gonna stay on a lot better with this treble hook. I just saw that crack. Let's make a trip into the outside world. Ugh. Uh, sun is high in the sky. It is pretty warm out here. It looks like my competition has left. I don't see anybody else out here. I've got all these fish to myself, pretty much. Seal that back up. All right, guys, it is time to fillet our trout. It's been about three hours since we've caught this guy and we've only got a few bites since then. I have been getting bites, but I just haven't been able to connect with one of them. Whew. Look at that. Look at that, that is so beautiful right there. It's gonna taste like salmon. Cut these bones out. Man, I'm sure glad we caught this fish because it has not been the best day of fishing. I have been getting bites consistently, so it might just be a matter of me not being able to hook up with them, but it's definitely been kind of slow out here. Two beautiful fresh rainbow trout fillets that we're gonna cook up for dinner right out here. Look at that, that is just the filet mignon of the lake. Guys, look at this view. It has turned out to be a beautiful day. There's not been one lick of wind, which is super unusual. I'm gonna try to enjoy this evening and I'm not gonna be sitting in the hut anymore because it's just so dark and gloomy. I might as well be out here cooking up some fresh trout and uh, just enjoying this evening. And I'm gonna jig in that hole right there, maybe connect with another fish. We'll see. All right, guys, I'm gonna cook up some fresh trout here. I got that rod in this hole that I'm watching, then my other rod is in there, and I just got a bite on it. So I'm gonna watch that one closely, and hopefully we get a bite here. But we gotta cook this fish. It's going on about four o'clock, so not quite dinner time, but I'm pretty hungry. And once the sun goes behind that mountain, it's gonna get really, really cold. So might as well eat this fish now. I'm gonna cut this filet in half. All right, got some zesty lemon seasoning, which is pretty much turning into my favorite. And lay him down. That smells amazing. Give him a flip. Look at that. It's just like salmon. It is just like salmon. Another two, three minutes on that side and it should be done. This thin piece is done. Let's go ahead and try it out. There we go, fresh rainbow trout. Oh no. Oh, that's good. That is good. Nice and hot off the pan. And there we go, fresh trout. Look at that, 
I want to I want to say that that's better than the striper we cooked earlier. I think it's just because this is a lot more fresh. I think the trout's going to take the dub today for sure. Fish for lunch, fish for dinner. Doesn't get better than that. All right, guys, so here's the plan for the rest of the evening. Got about an hour and a half, maybe two hours left of daylight, and I'm going to pack up the tent and just get everything all ready to go because I don't want to be cleaning up in the dark. And like I said, it's a nice night out here. Might as well enjoy it. Look how much the ice melted just around my tent. Like, that's water. Getting a bite and getting a bite. There he is. There we go. Fish on. Good one. Really good one. No, 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 no. No, I got him. I got him. I got him. Really good fish. Really good fish. Oh my gosh. I got a fish. The sun is just about to go behind the mountain. And we're hooked up on something big here. Dude. He is ripping drag. He is ripping drag. What do we got here? What do we got here? It's something giant. It's something giant. Oh my. Oh, oh, no, no. Look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. That is a nice fish. But the way he was running, I thought I hooked into like a 10 pounder. I am not even kidding. That drag isn't like super loose either. I mean, it's light line, so I don't have it locked down, but. Are you kidding me? Beautiful rainbow. Take him home, cook him up. That was one of the hardest fights that a trout has ever given me through the ice. I, I mean, that's a decent fish for sure. But, wow. <laughs> that's all I can say, wow. Heck yeah. All right, drop her back down. And imagine what like a three pounder would feel like. That's probably like a pound, but just imagine the fight like a three or four pounder would give up which there are fish that big in here and bigger so it's definitely not outside the realm of possibility oh no way no way on the drop there's another bite there's another bite are you kidding me got him another one another one on the drop oh <laughs> look at that look at that just a tiny little guy like an eight incher. Throw him on a circle hook and see what we can catch. Well, I'll take it, dude. It's a fish. I will take it. We're gonna let him go. See ya. The clock is quickly running out. Got about 10 more minutes before we're gonna have to pack it in. Come on, one more fish. One more pig. Come on, please. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. We got a few bites there at the end, but we couldn't capitalize on them, but we did catch another one, so pretty good day. Three fish in total. Definitely plan on coming back. If you guys wanna see more ice fishing videos, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.